WA6RNG, this K6DUE. Byron, you still on frequency? K6DUE, this WA6RNG walking mobile. Uh, right, uh, Roy, I'm still here. Uh, uh, how have you been? Oh, just fine, thanks. What are you up to? I'm taking my constitutional with Betty. Where are you? You'll never believe it. I'm in Long Beach, aboard the Queen Mary. Seemed like a good day to take the tour. Break. Go ahead, Breaker. This is WA6BAW, Mobile 6. Byron, are you the guy who recorded those radio announcements? The ones described in ham radio. I'm the guy. Well, I heard two of them last week. They're terrific. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, they've been getting quite a bit of play around the country. WA6RNG, W6PJX. Boyne, how are you? Fine, Byron. Hi, Renee. Hi, Roy. Break, please. That's my better half, guys. What you have here is a typical example of a bunch of friends and acquaintances hamming it up. Bernie, is there anything you'd like me to stop for on the way home? These are hams, amateur radio operators. Bernie Abramson is a director of cinematography. His wife, Patty, works for an airline. Renee Tidwell is an engineer. Roy Neal is, of course, NBC science editor. And Byron Paul is Dick Van Dyke's partner. Which explains how I got involved in a show about ham radio. I've been over at Byron's a lot. And he's usually here in the shack, as he calls it, fooling around with his rig, talking to one of his friends. He's got him all over the world. He's really into this hobby. Kind of looks like fun to me, too. You never know who you're going to hear on this thing. Okay, John, thank you very much for a nice QSO. See you I later. I your voice. W6 RTN, this is W6 RO. K6DUE operating. 73. You know, amateur radio is the world's most fascinating hobby. To me, as a science reporter, I try to keep up with the developments in modern technology. But nothing gives me more of a thrill than the achievements of amateur radio. There are ham stations almost everywhere. For example, this one, aboard the Queen Mary, manned daily by members of the Long Beach Amateur Radio Club for the benefit of tourists and visiting hams like me. They even have a museum right next door, filled with radio memorabilia from the ship and from the early days of ham radio. It's hard to believe, but radio's less than a hundred years old. It was 1896 when Marconi sent his first messages by wireless. Soon after, imaginative pioneers had built one-tube receivers that could hear signals in those supposedly worthless frequencies that are now all of the broadcast and shortwave bands. And when they listened carefully, this is what they heard. This early spark gap transmitter sent out a radio wave that a good receiver could hear as far as 200 miles away. It was with amateur equipment like this that our sophisticated communications industry got its start. And under the guidance of Hiram Percy Maxim, ham radio got itself organized in 1914 with the founding of the American Radio Relay League here in this house in Hartford, Connecticut. Today, with modern buildings and facilities in New England, Connecticut, the ARRL is still the focal point of organized amateur activities in the United States. Other countries have their own organizations. The Radio Society of Great Britain serves England's 20,000 plus amateurs from its headquarters in London, where the entire operation is fully computerized. In Tokyo, the Japan Amateur Radio League performs similar functions for the fast-growing ham population in Japan. But no matter where you go, the goal of amateur radio is always the same, communication. This amateur station near Phoenix belongs to a ham named Barry, United States Senator Barry Goldwater. Hello, uh, Mrs. Martineau. Yes, uh -huh. This is an amateur radio station in Arizona. And uh, we have your husband, the captain, on the other end of this hookup. Uh -huh. and I'd like to ask you, have you ever talked before by amateur radio? I sure have. Oh, you have. Well... <laughs> That's wonderful. We're always glad to hear that. And you know the magic word over. Fine. And don't forget it. And the next voice that you hear will be that of Captain Martineau. Okay. AI-8 Alpha Hotel. This is AFA-7 UGA. Ready to go. Roger, Robert. And this here is the captain's voice. Hi, over there. And this is Pete. And uh, it's, uh, it's Thursday morning over here on the 27th. And uh, who am I talking to, Roger? talking to me, honey, and it sounds wonderful to hear your voice. We're just sitting here finishing dinner, and... Uh, it gives me a great deal of satisfaction every time I can make a phone patch like this. There's the technical achievement of being able to talk to the other side of the world, but more than that, 
It's using this ability to help someone stay in touch with family and friends. I love you so much, and we're so lonesome. Over. I love you too, darling. Uh, have you got your little friends there, and how are they? Over. Here's Marsha. Hi, Dad. Over. Hi, Marsha. Some hams specialize in relaying messages from Little America. It's a service well appreciated because amateur radio is the only person-to-person -person link between the Antarctic crew and their families back home. 84 USX Little America, this is W6NEZ, Sherman Oaks, California. I have Mrs. Lyons on the line and she's very anxious to hear her son's voice and she has talked on a phone catch before, so we're ready, over. W6NEZ, this is uh, KC4 USX in Little America, very, very fine one, Art. You're coming through great down here today. You're ready to go in just about five seconds. The ham radio is a real morale booster, here and in hundreds of places around the globe. Quite an accomplishment for a bunch of volunteers. Sometimes you don't need to hear a familiar voice, but just get a message through. That's when hams rely on Morse code, still the most efficient way to communicate. Some amateurs, like Louise here, handle thousands of messages a year, all for other people. Radio teletype is another way hams communicate. David Evans, in his home just outside London, is talking to a friend in Middlesex using his amateur teletype. A person with a speech or hearing problem has no handicap here because with teletype, you let your fingers do the talking. Not that there's anything wrong with just talking. Lots of hams make lots of friends that way. I'm glad you have everything under control. And it's nice to know there's always someone there if you need help. April Mel is putting her hobby to work in the St. Jude Hospital Rehab Center. Uh, this is KL7, I visit Anchorage, Alaska. The handle here is Harley, H-A-R-L-E-Y, and the number is 5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-
many husband and wife amateurs find it easy to keep in touch no matter where they are. Did you ever wonder how parade coordinators keep their parades coordinated? Well, in parades all across the country, volunteer hams use portable radios to relay information from the parade route back to the officials so decisions are made faster and the parades run more smoothly. And recently, the Rose Parade got a new service, amateur television. With video cameras and amateur transmitters, the ham operators enable the parade officials to see firsthand the crucial areas of the route. If any float has trouble, like making a turn, for instance, the parade coordinators spot the problem on their monitor and know what is needed. Tom, your picture's beginning to come in now. Now, of course, hams have been experimenting with television since before sure. television. Snow free, great picture. Dale Hauk is about to be visited by the Tom O'Hara family, 30 miles away, via amateur television. Uh, something else I'd like to show you is Kelly's uh, new trophy she got for motorcycle racing. Yeah, okay, here's Kelly in the uh, trophy. It's almost as big as she is. Um, she got first place in her class. Well, that's fine, Kelly. Congratulations. That's a beautiful trophy. Hey, okay, Dale, Ricky's uh, at the computer here, and he's getting to be quite a hot shot at uh, this target game where he's shooting down spaceships. Another rich and, source uh, of experimentation is the personal yeah. computer. These gadgets can do millions of things, including yeah. send and receive Morse yeah, code kind of at any speed you code. want. And uh, even balance my checkbook once in a while. With these miniaturized transceivers, your range increases as your altitude increases. Even with low power, communications are reliable for over 100 miles when you're well off the ground. Consequently, hams have repeaters, automatic relay stations, high atop buildings, mountains, television towers. And these repeaters listen for signals and then retransmit them from their lofty perch. When relayed by a repeater, a small one-watt radio like this has the same range as much higher-powered units. I haven't talked with you in quite a while. If you want a repeater that really covers some territory, try putting it 500 miles up. This is Oscar 8, an amateur satellite, in its final testing stage. There are two transponders on board. One of them was built by a group in Japan, the Japanese AMSAT group. One was built by the AMSAT group in Washington. The Germans built the battery charge regulators, and the Canadians built some of the control circuitry. And it's really an international effort. It takes a lot of work from a lot of people to complete a project like this, but it's worth it because with amateur satellites, hams have reliable, long-range communications using small antenna and less power than an average light bulb. And when the first Oscar satellite was launched into orbit, it was another noteworthy success added to an already long list of amateur radio achievements. Juliet Bravo Kilo, this is Japan, Yokohama number one, Juliet Yankee one. Uh, I'm receiving you. Not only is amateur radio a hobby of vast technical diversity, it's an avocation which attracts people from every walk of life and level of society. And uh, my complete call sign is Juliet Yankee number one, just the two letters and the one number. Uh, my handle is Hussein, hotel, uniform, Sierra, Sierra, Echo India November. And the QTH is just northwest of Amman, Alpha, Mike. This Mike, is King Hussein of Jordan, one of the best known amateur radio operators in the world. The ham with whom he's talking doesn't realize he's talking to a king, but most hams do know who belongs to the call sign JY1. Bye bye and all the very best of 73s. Delta Kilo, 2 Oscar Charlie, DK, 2 Oscar Charlie. 
Delta Kilo to Oscar Charlie. This is Japan. Uh, you, Yankee One. Juliet Yankee One. Uh, good afternoon to you, my friend. Five by nine. Go. Okay, we'll find your majesty. Your fires at nine likewise into West Berlin. West Berlin is a location and my name is Uli, United London, Italy. We work here, sell by Whiskey Alpha 3, Hotel United Pont Bar, and we're running an ICOM 701, a solid kilowatt linear amplifier behind, and the antenna is a TH60XX of about 225 feet. JY1, DK2, Oscar Charlie. DK2 Oscar Charlie, Roger, uh, my good friend, uh, thank you very much indeed. You have a very solid signal into uh, this QTH near Amman, the capital city of Jordan, 59 plus. And we are operating the Tango Romeo 7 transceiver by Drake and the L4B linear amplifier. And uh, my KSL manager is Whiskey Alpha 3, Honolulu, United Pacific, and this is Hussein, wishing you all the very best of 7 threes. King Hussein not only enjoys ham radio personally, he has implemented creative uses of ham radio in his country's schools. CQ, CQ, CQ. Japan, Yankee 5, Hotel, Hotel, Florida, calling CQ 15. CQ, CQ. These young ladies comprise this year's amateur radio class at the Al Hussein Secondary School for Girls. In addition to good operating practices, these students are taught Morse code and international regulations. With this modest station, both teachers and students enjoy communicating with other hands all over the world. This international communication not only polishes operating skills, but sharpens understanding of foreign customs and lifestyles. I believe that uh, as far as amateur radio is concerned, it's, it's a way of uh, bringing people together uh, throughout the world. It's uh, an interest that um, enhances the creativity of young people and uh, their knowledge of uh, electronics. It creates uh, tremendous opportunities in so many fields and in so many areas. It's somehow appropriate that here, in Jordan, one of the first areas of the Earth inhabited by intelligent man, a creative use of amateur radio is helping develop this nation's scientific community. But ham radio is more than a worldwide reservoir of technical talent. It's fun, and often hams get together in person. For example, at a convention in San Diego, sponsored by the American Radio Relay League. It's a chance to see all the latest equipment, hear speakers on a variety of topics, and have eyeball contacts with friends you've made on the air. One of the most enjoyable activities in the Hams year is field day. It's a sort of 24-hour operating marathon organized by the American Radio Relay League. The major feature of field day is that every ham station participating in the contest is using emergency type power, batteries, generators, solar cells, you name it. The key to putting out a big signal is a good antenna. This field day operation running less than 10 watts was the top winner in a recent competition. It's lots of fun to see how many other stations you can contact, but the big benefit is emergency preparedness. With field day, every ham in the country can practice his skills under simulated emergency conditions. When the ground gave way at Laguna Beach, California, dozens of homes were damaged or destroyed. With the phone lines down, two-way radio was the only way to get messages into and out of the disaster area. Dozens of amateurs took off work to help their neighbors. They used their repeater's auto patch, an automated telephone patching system, to let victims reassure worried relatives that they were okay. The hams also relayed thousands of messages for the Red Cross and other groups aiding the victims. Sometimes hams become heroes and make headlines. The story of WD6FFV was front page news and the subject of television news reports. This morning, 13-year-old Californian Mike Davis saved the lives of three persons aboard a sinking boat in the Caribbean. He did it by relaying the boat's distress signal to the Coast Guard on his amateur radio. The teenager was listening to his radio at 1 o'clock this morning when he heard the signals for help from the boat. For as yet unexplained reasons, the Coast Guard did not pick up the distress call in Miami, 
but it was heard here by Mike more than 3,000 miles away. So he took control and relayed messages to officials for over an hour. And because communications were established, the Coast Guard in Miami was able to track down the sinking boat and all aboard were rescued. Mike, at any time while you were talking with the sinking boat, were you worried that uh, you weren't doing the right thing? Uh, not really. I didn't have any much time to do that, think about that. Neighbors had recently called Mike's antennas unsightly. After this morning's rescue, Mike's mother says the antennas will stay. Mike Davis, ham radio hero. Hams often supply communications during disasters and are especially effective in rugged territory such as this in a near wilderness area southeast of San Francisco. Firefighters are making slow headway against a devastating forest fire. With stations at all fire camps, volunteer amateurs provide supplemental communications for the firefighting organization. We're going to have more activity in the Carmel Valley, and we need the coverage. Well, I agree with that. I agree with that, but that's the only thing that's getting in there. We've got some other problems down here. We have used uh, the ham operators the most as the camps are getting organized. And uh, until the ground lines can be established, we've needed uh, the ham operators to help us get information back and forth. Also, these people have the capabilities of, uh, of uh, allowing the firefighters to talk home. The Army sergeant with the unit here came in uh, with, uh, with ten messages, all of the same text, to ten different people, of course. Uh, each one will accept a direct collect call. So I suggest that we give you, first of all, the text of the message. Uh, will that be okay? Okay? Yeah, that's right. Go ahead. Okay, the text of the message to each of the recipients will be am alive and well, hope to be released within the next few days. Uh, break for check. You're writing. Am I? Am alive and well, hope to be released in the next few days. Uh, Roger, on that. The Marble Cone Fire was finally brought under control after two weeks of battle thanks to the 24-hour efforts of hundreds of firefighters and scores of volunteer amateur radio operators. Everybody got minus 50 degrees and nobody believed it, right? Here's a hand doing a different kind of volunteering. You don't even believe those magic little pins you've got there that copy the Morse code better than most of us, right? Stu Gillum, okay, actor, minus, comedian, huh? and today also a ham volunteer instructor at Murphy's radio class. Did everybody get that? All the people nodding their head got that, right? Two and meters. the people looking mystified didn't. No. <laughs> I got it. Okay. <laughs> this is a class of hams that want to get their amateur extra license, the top of the line. But most of them started here. This is the class for people who don't know a thing about radio but they want to get in on the action. And in just a couple of months, these folks will be able to get their first ham license and get on the air. It's not that hard, especially the novice test. David, uh, what is Ohm's law? What is? Eerie. Yeah, Ohm's law is eerie, which is what? E equals I R. Okay, that's fine. Ham radio is especially uh, beneficial to the handicapped. And there are classes and ham clubs all over the country that offer help in getting started. And a good ham station doesn't have to take up the whole house either. This novice put his gear in his bedroom. It cost him about, oh, $300. Oh, hey, you can spend more than that. But you don't have to mortgage the house or hock your mother-in-law to get started. Oh, one thing you can count on. Once you get started, you'll be hooked. I am, that's for sure. W6AQ, W Delta 6 FBU. WD6FBU, this is W6AQ. Well, there you have it, the world of amateur radio. Most of all, it's people communicating with people. And in our future as hams, we dream of the day when members of our fraternity will be orbiting the Earth in space stations or inhabiting colonies on the moon or Mars. We see in the near future handheld radios like this linked to satellites that will give us worldwide person-to-person -person capabilities. But most of all, in the here and now, our hobby gives us the world, a world of learning, of helping others, and just plain having fun. Is uh, this frequency clear? This is W6RO.